guitar for the hymn God be the glory.
the word of God written in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 to 20. The certainty of God's promise. When God made a promise to Abraham, because he had no one to record by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently endured, obtained the promise. Human beings, of course, swear by someone greater than themselves. And an oath given as confirmation puts an end to all the speech. In the same way, when God desired to show even more clearly to the heirs of the promise, the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it by an oath, so that through two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible that God would prove false, we who have taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to seize the hope set before us. We have strongly we have this hope of sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters the inner shrine behind a certain curtain, where Jesus, a forerunner on our behalf, has entered, having become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Anybody else? How much you could drink? <laughs> How much woman you could keep? Hello? How much money you could steal? Start with sound familiar? In other words, there are people who measure what it means to become a man by a standard that does not come from the courts of heaven. I want to leave with you something that I want you to take home in your life. Make sure that you absorb it on the 50th anniversary service, and I don't want you to ever forget it. This is how God measures you, how he measures me, by the love and devotion that we have in our heart for Him. Amen. 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 What did Father Time just say? God measures you by what? The love and devotion that you have in your heart for Him. And I'm not talking about coming to church and saying, Hi, Jesus, and then you leave and say, Bye, Jesus, and you leave him behind. But this is an everyday, everyday, 
human experience. In other words, the one thing that the Boris Brigade should teach you to do is to make sure that you keep on building that intimate and personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ in the power of His Holy Spirit. That's number one. Number two, I believe God expects us to relate to the people around us in a positive manner. Amen. In other words, you and I are to make sure that we are our brother's keeper, our sister's keeper. We must make sure that we walk upright, that we refuse to follow the ways of the world and follow the ways of God. There are many people who put on a mask and they're willing to follow Jesus when they get church. But as soon as they step on the door, they take off their Sunday go to meeting clothes and put on their red suit with a pitchfork. Who they working for when they put that red suit and pitchfork? That's right, the devil. You and I need to understand we are servants of the living God. Amen. And we serve Jesus by serving him in the lives of other people. Boys Brigade will teach you that. It will help you to understand that you don't live for yourself. You live for the sake of other people. And the third thing I want to leave with you today is this. If there's one thing that you must work on, is yourself. Amen. Jesus says, love your neighbor as well. Self. And if you don't love yourself, then I might as well tell you, you are already in trouble. You are already in a difficult spot. I thought about all the people I had the voice to give you. Some of them have passed on and gone home to glory. I remember People like any the stirred boys who perished because they were defending this country on the flamingo. How many of you all remember that? Okay? They were members here yeah, at this church and part of the boys brigade who made up that wonderful organization. I think about Bishop Paul and Moss. You all remember him? I think about all the great people who have passed from here whose life seemed to be cut short and yet God still used them in a special way. And I want to say to you all, God does not make junk. No, sir. No, sir. He made you because He loves you. He cares for you. You have worth and value in His sight. And if you're sitting in this church, Say, well, ain't nothing to me, I'm a nobody. That's not true. You are somebody in God's eternal plan. Just take a look at the cross behind me. And that cross is a reminder that God has put a value on your life and on mine. He shed his precious blood so that we may know that we have worth. And if you have worth and value, then you don't treat this body any old heart. Amen. You treat it with respect. Hallelujah. You make sure you look after it. You tend it. You make sure that as you journey along, you make sure that you build up that relationship between you and God so you learn what it is more and more day by day to be somebody whose self-esteem will not be rocked by other people's evaluation of you. Amen. When the world says something negative about you, you need to say to them, excuse me, that's what you may think, Amen. but it certainly is not what my God thinks no, of you. Those three things, let's see if you remember. The first one, get your relationship right with you. The second one, make sure that you have a deep-rooted respect for all the people who surround you. And the third one is this. Make sure that you allow the grace of God to work on you personally. 
Because the more changes God makes, the better you're going to be in this life. Amen. You think you are on your way now. Watch what God will do in your life. Amen. All the great people who passed in this company, let me tell you, some of them gone to glory, some of them are still here. But God is going to use the young people from the 23rd company to do even greater things. Because the God that we know is able. Let that God work in your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Officers and boys and parents of the 23rd Bahamas Company of the Boys Brigade, I greet you on behalf of the Western Caribbean Regional Fellowship of the Boys Brigade, which embraces the countries of Belize, Bahamas, Cayman Islands, Haiti, Jamaica, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Should you spare a moment to reflect on your journey to achieve the 50 years of existence you would conclude that the greater number of those years, your activities were carried out in normal times. It is likely that you routinely execute your drill and Bible class activities without conscious thought of the motto of the Boys Brigade, sure and steadfast, and its emblem, the anchor. As you meet today, in celebration of your 50th anniversary, I ask you to recognize that this is taking place in abnormal and trying times. The COVID-19 pandemic, which has brought untold havoc, economic hardship, and death around the world, it causes us to conclude that, indeed, we're not living in normal times. 
despite the restrictions on your goings out, the curfews and other prevention measures you are experiencing, the sacred task of advancing Christ's kingdom among your boys must continue and no effort should be spared in accomplishing this task. As you, the officers and boys, face the challenging times going into the 51st year, I entreat you to anchor your faith, your trust, and your determination in the words of the BB Anchor Song. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Congratulations and every blessing in the days ahead. Hello, my name is Bill Stevenson and I'm currently the Interim Secretary of Global Fellowship. And Global Fellowship, I suppose, is the Boys' Brigade equivalent of the United Nations. So it's my very great pleasure to bring you greetings on behalf of all the Boys' Brigade members across this world on this special day. I think William Smith would be delighted to know that the Boys' Brigade is still doing well so many years after it was founded in Glasgow in 1883. And he'd be delighted to know that in the Bahamas, you're still flying the BB flag and showing people that the Boys' Brigade is still a great force for good. So, on behalf of everyone in Global Fellowship, I'd like to give you every blessing and hope you have a very successful day. Give thanks to God as we celebrate 50 years as the 23rd Company of the Boys' Brigade in the Bahamas. Boys Brigade has been very helpful in introducing young men to Christian principles and disciplined ways of living. To this end, we are extremely grateful to Mr. Henry Curry, who has been a surrogate father to so many boys who did not have close contacts with their biological fathers. And so the Boys Brigade, in this sense, has been a substitute in a positive way to the young men of this area. When we think of the Boys Brigade and their contributions, we think of such men as Simeon, as Mr. Penn, Mr. Palmer, and our own Henry Curry, who have given sacrificially to the men in this way. And in order to allowed to function fruitfully, we must thank Lorraine, Henry's wife, and the other wives who have allowed their husbands to share quality time with boys who were in need. And as we reflect on our own 23rd company, we think of the many times the boys have been on camps and tours of different states, different countries, particularly the USA, and there has been established a very fraternal bond among them. As we celebrate, I make a request that all those boys who have been in our company, band together and give Mr. Curry a donation. He will be reluctant to receive one, but nevertheless, he deserves one. So get together and give him something 
substantial. Don't talk about this small token in gratitude, but make a token that is substantial and will allow him to buy something in which he can remember you rather than a plaque. As I go around, many boys come and say, you are Bishop Thompson or Father Thompson. I say, yes. And they normally say, you don't know me, but I remember you through the 23rd come to Boys Brigade. And many have become policemen and defense officers. So the uh, contribution has been immersed in the nation. So as we celebrate 20, 25 plus 25, that's 50 years of service, of fellowship, of camaraderie, of discipline, and the pursuit of life, discipline, responsibility, and love of nation, and self-development. We say thank you, Boys Brigade. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Thank you, all the men like Mr. Penn and Mr. Palmer, who have sacrificially given to the boys intangible values. So thank you again. We celebrate half a century, a half a century of existence. Thank you very much.
personal thing, the boys will be as the organization that you see fit to allow your boys to be mentored and monitored and brought up in the way that Jesus do. So I say thank you for your sacrificial talents and bring them up from meeting to meeting and some of you have gone along and made the capital of the back and over you too as well. We want to say thank you for choosing the boys to be. Amen. Amen. Alumni and leaders, I want to say thank you for leaders who exist now and alumni who have gone on this organization, including uh, their current ministers. Those who are passed on and we remember the defense force officers and all of those members and even Captain Curry's son who passed. We want to remember them for the dedication they get sent in for the, the dedication that they showed to this great company. Alumni, I say thank you for your support, supporting Captain Curry, not just today, but over the past many five decades. And also, we want to say thank you for the leaders who exist now. But I want to challenge you. Captain Curry, acknowledge to us seven years ago that he'll get the outcome to the 50. My question to you now, who will fill those shoes? Can I be a record? Finally, I want to say, I want to say thank you. And I cannot separate these two. And yes, we are here upon a captain girl. But there's no captain girl without Mr. Curry. And so I say thank you to Captain Curry and his co-captain, Mr. Curry, for the awesome responsibility of taking on and given 50 years of your life to this great organization, to be parents of boys that you did not bring into the world. And I say thank you, you two together. I don't want to separate you today. I'm not separating you, even though we know we love Captain Kelly. I'm not separating you today. Because it's your partnership that has allowed the, the 23rd company to exist even now and the wonderful sacrifice you have given to this great organization. Indeed, I say thank you on behalf of what's the Honorable Council. Captain Kelly, you can't say much. Much more to say we love you and we know that God blesses you because you have given your life, the sacrificial life, to serving God by introducing the boys to Jesus. God bless you. Keep your wings and shine on the riches of you. God gives you his eternal peace. You know,
with so many young men over these many years. Thank you ever so much. We salute and say a very special thanks to our many sponsors who have funded our programs and summer camps over the years. Consolidated Water, the TK Foundation, and the Boys and Gay Council for their recent donation of the tablets for the, for the boys. Last but no means least, our profound thanks and immense gratitude and have been emotional to our Captain Henry Curran, who has promoted the habits of obedience, reverence, discipline, and self-respect in all that tends towards a true Christian manliness for 50 years.
blessing of the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be with us now and remain with us 